Hi, welcome to the Jar of Life Guide. Thank you for purchasing this workbook. I hope you will benefit from it and get to improve your time management skills. My name is Fauzan. I will be your personal learning facilitator for this workbook. Psst. Let me share with you a little secret. This workbook won't work unless you do. Before we start, here are a few ground rules. Write in the workbook as you watch this video. Have a goal. Which area do you want to improve on first? Focus on one thing at a time. Work towards improving that first. Review this video again two weeks later. Are we good? Now let's get started. There was a reason why you pick up this book. There must have been something that made you decide that you need to improve your time management. Whatever the reason may be, it is a valid reason. And that would be your goal. To achieve what you set out to achieve when you bought this workbook. It is an indication that you want to improve a certain aspect of your life. That's good. Congratulations. Because you're off to a good start. The key to managing time is knowing what you want to do with the time that you have in hand. And what you want to do starts with your own goals in life. You will remain where you are if you are not sure of your direction and a goal gives you a direction. So in life, what is most important to you? Feel free to pause this video here and really think about it. In fact, do not, I repeat, do not proceed until you have a clear answer to this question. Are you familiar with this quote? There is never enough time to do everything, but there is always enough time to do the most important thing. Isn't that true? For example, we say that family time is important, but we end up missing it because we stay back at work until late. So the main question when it comes to managing time is, are we using it to do the important things? If it's yes, good for you. If it's a maybe, we need to do something. If it's a no, what is it then that we are doing? Does this look familiar? You put in a lot of time and energy, but nothing seems to get done. Let's take a look at some of the most common time wasters. You might need a separate piece of paper for this one. Sure, mistakes happen. No doubt, as human beings, it is natural for us to make mistakes. However, if mistakes happen and it causes you or someone else to spend an extra time having to redo the same task, it is a major time waster. Repetitive mistakes are also a big time waster because it is not productive. Try and recall and note some of the time wasters in this category that comes into your mind. Traveling to work, that's necessity. A trip to the shop, that's normal. But a trip to the shop and then back home only to realize that you forgot to buy something and having to go back again, even though on a different day, is a big time waster. Try to recall and note this type of time wasters that comes to your mind. Being on time is good. Being early is a desired virtue that we wish many others would have. However, if we are early and end up just waiting and doing nothing, then we are just wasting our time. Time is a resource that you can spend but cannot save. Even though you save time on traveling, that extra minute you gain would be used up, regardless of what you do with it. Don't get me wrong, I don't mean for you to come later that's counter-effective. But being aware that waiting time is a time waster would definitely help you to see your time voids. 
We shall discuss this further in another segment. For now, try and recall this type of time wasters that comes to your mind. This one is a bit tricky because it requires you to re-evaluate how you do things. The key here is to simplify processes. It's not jumping steps or taking shortcuts, but consciously looking at what can be done or rearranged to save time. Try and recall and note down some of the time wasters that comes to your mind. Have you heard of the term panic buying? This is when you stock up on inventory because you are worried that you may need it later in case an emergency occurs. The may need it later part might not even happen and you would have ended up wasting your time doing something that was never necessary in the first place. Yes, it's good to be prudent, but make sure you consider realistically, not impulsively. Try to recall some of this type of time wasters. It is a huge time waster if you are unable to use your strengths and talents where you can shine. It is also a waste if you have options of using a skilled person but instead you purposely chose not to. However, bear in mind that doing something for the purpose of learning or training to improve a competency is not considered a time waster. It's an investment for the future. You must be able to differentiate between these two situations. Try to recall and note this type of time wasters that comes to your mind. A baker's dozen? That's okay. But when you make duplicates just to be sure, that's wastage. Just one more, just one more, and five more later, you would have exceeded the targeted time. Then it snowballs and you end up having been squeezed into a corner later. How many times has this happened to you? So how many of these time wasters are currently filling up your day? Review each one of them and think of ways to reduce, avoid, or prevent them from happening. So you try to manage your time better. You read books and articles from the internet, but nothing seems to work. You don't see progress. Let's take a look at what are the actual skills required for better time management. You must be able to identify and differentiate critical and less critical activities or tasks. And where appropriate, adjust priorities. You must learn to effectively allocate time to complete your task. And when working with others, able to coordinate your own schedule with others' schedule to avoid conflicts and risk. To make the best out of your available time, you must ensure that all items you require such as equipment, tools, materials, etc. are in appropriate order so that work can be done effectively. You might not have everything perfectly ready. However, you must be able to utilize available resources and leverage where possible to complete tasks efficiently. Last but not least, you must use time effectively and prevent distractions from interfering with your goals to complete the task. Those were the five skills. Now closely review which of these skills are you really good at. Keep it up. Which of these skills are you okay with? How can we do that better? Out of the five, which is your stumbling block? Let's find ways to improve on it. There are only 24 hours in a day. That is the jar. The jar size is fixed. You cannot simply resize it. Now let's take a look at what goes into the jar. The stones, the pebbles, and the sand. The stones are the important things in our life. They may not seem to be urgent to do now. The pebbles are the necessities. They are often urgent and important to get done. The sand are the other stuff. They are not necessarily important, but usually urgent, require attention, and eats up our time. The stones are the important things in our life. 
they may not seem to be urgent to do now. Try to list them out. Identifying these activities is the first step in time management. From here, you can make a judgment call on the difference between stones, pebbles, and the sand. Which activities or tasks are which? Pause here if you need to. Pebbles are the necessities. They are often urgent and important to get done. Try to list them out. Pause here if you need to. The sand are the other stuff. They are not necessarily important, but usually urgent, require attention and eats up our time. Try to list them out. Pause here if you need to. Time management is not about what you put in the jar. It's how you put it in. You can't resize the jar, but you can decide on which one goes in first. Not everything will fit into your jar, but if you fill it in with the sand first, you will not be able to fit in many stones later. Categorize to give priority, prioritize to give focus. Two words that are often associated with time management are urgency and importance. Urgency is determined by the amount of time available or specific time frame. Importance is determined by the impact it brings, financially, well-being, survival, etc. And its dependency on you specifically to do the task. This is the priority matrix. It consists of time available and level of importance. Based on this, a task can be categorized under four categories. Very important, very urgent. Very important, not so urgent. Not so important, very urgent. Not so important, not so urgent. After you have categorized the task accordingly, you can put it into the jar. Start with the stones and pebbles and then the sand. Stone, pebble, sand. Stone, pebble, sand. By categorizing the tasks and activities accordingly, you will be able to allocate time for the things that you need and want to do. Quick question, if you're being served pasta for dinner, which of these two would you be using? 
Forks and spoons are tools that you use when you want to eat. To manage time, you would also need to use tools. Here are some examples of time management tools.
Use tools that will help you to find the void. Use tools that will make time visible. Writing things down is a self-commitment to get it done. Self-improvement can be very challenging. Here are a few words of encouragement for those who want to improve their time management. Do yourself a favor. Make things better. We all make mistakes. It's okay. Learn from it and make it better the next round. Most of the time, the biggest challenge is your surroundings. Learn to recognize what needs control and what needs management. The things you often can control are your reactions and your actions. The rest you need to manage with systems and structure. Start by managing your day. Strategize how you approach things. Start to manage your day by using the daily schedule. Make it a habit. Days become weeks, weeks become months, months become years. Start small. Don't be too hard on yourself. Plan for about 60% of your time and leave room for the unexpected. Plan for the best but always prepare for the worst, both mentally and emotionally. Time management is the ability to manage activities and control your reactions on how you spend the hours in your day to effectively accomplish your goals. Time management is self-management. We have reached the last part, time for review. You will remain where you are if you are not sure of your direction. Always have a goal. Never forget your purpose. There is never enough time to do everything, but there is always enough time to do the most important thing. Find out what's important to you. There are only 24 hours in a day. That is the jar. The jar's size is fixed. You can't simply resize it. Time management is not about what you put into your jar, it's how you put it in. Identifying what's important is the first step in time management. From there, you will be able to make a judgment call on which are considered to be your stones, pebbles, and sand. Not everything will fit into your jar, but if you fill it in with the sand first, you will not be able to fit many stones later. You need to realize how and what is filling your jar. Find the air pockets. You can fill it up with sands or even pebbles. Use a tool for this. We all make mistakes. It's okay. Learn from it and make it better the next round. Don't be too hard on yourself. Learn to recognize what needs control and what needs management. The things you often can control are your reactions and your actions. The rest you need to manage with systems and structure. You cannot change the environment, but you can fix the odds. Expect the unexpected. Plan for the best, but always prepare for the worst, both mentally and emotionally. Time management is self-management. Until we meet again, all the best.